Coming up chapter 12 now here in module 10. Again, chapter 12 has covered three modules in intermediate Greek. Uh, two here, a module 10, uh, now focusing on conjunctions and adverbs. In module 8, we looked at pronouns, then prepositions, now conjunctions and adverbs. As I've stated along the way, in chapter 12, the authors survey small words that cast a disproportionately large shadow. These words have exegetical and homiletical significance. Uh, here, the conjunctions and adverbs are especially uh, noteworthy for what we might call rhetorical criticism. This is a division of interpreting scripture, uh, Old and New Testaments, or other texts as well, and trying to follow rhetoric in a positive sense. Sometimes we think of rhetoric as uh, that person's just being rhetorical, not really having a point. But when we think of rhetorical criticism, we think of the argument and the structure of a text, and uh, conjunctions especially structure a text, but also help to explain ideas. So a good bit of material to cover here. Let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing on module 10. Lord, help students, help me to be clear, uh, help us to understand your word, the flow of thought, ideas. Pray that you will build us up in that and give us encouragement in it. I pray that you will help us to better communicate your word and help those who hear us and follow us to better interpret it themselves. Give students margin now as we turn the corner toward the conclusion of Intermediate Greek 2. We ask this in your son's name. Amen. Looking here then at conjunctions. A couple of divisions. Those that coordinate or link independent units. Uh, units that have a subject and predicate could stand on their own. And those that link dependent units. And they may have a, a subject and predicate as well, but they cannot be understood on their own in the logic of the author's ideas. So when we think about conjunctions, we think about their, uh, their use and what they accomplish. They coordinate independent units and dependent units. Let's think first about the way they coordinate independent units. And as uh, Kostenberger, Merkel, and Plummer note, we want to think about BDAG here a good bit. These uh, small tables that are provided cannot do justice to the various ways that words are used. And I've highlighted Kai here and put a note for you to see Harris, page 123. He has a, a small paragraph just noting the various ways just chi is used in Colossians. And we see that chi can connect, but chi can also be an adversative. I've placed it here for you to note that chi can mean the exact opposite idea depending on the context and the, the way the author is using it. It can connect or it can contrast. You'll notice here that with the conjunction types, I have provided a bit of a mnemonic, all beginning with the letter C. So let's walk through these briefly. The copulative, just a connecting idea, and various uh, Greek particles, conjunctions, can accomplish a connection between two independent units. Chi is the most typical. De again, can be adversative, but can also be a connecting idea. Ude, mede, <clears throat> and not with the adversative connection. Uh, and again, see Harris for Colossians. The disjunctive, I think if this is turning a corner, perhaps someone spinning around and looking in this direction, that direction, or, or, whether this way, whether this way, if this way, a or ete, and we'll see in Colossians a text critical issue with a and how it's used in parallel. Many of these conjunctions are used in parallel, and you'll, you'll see this and, and appreciate it more and more. Now, it's not possible for us exegetically to slow down and analyze 
every every time we see a conjunction or adverb or particle, these smaller words. They're, they're just too many. But you'll, you'll find yourself, as you read, and as you become more familiar with these categories of use, they're just sort of brewing in the back of your mind. You'll pause and say, oh, now what is this small word doing here? And you begin to ask questions, and you can see that it's a disjunctive, a, a connective. It's turning a corner. Or it's a contrastive idea. This and not that. And again, chi can function as an adversative. I want to note one special combination of adversative, men, followed by de. So a couple of, of independent clauses, one beginning with men, the subsequent, and sometimes that subsequent clause can be a few verses away, even paragraphs. And uh, Hebrews 9, 1 and 11, and again I mentioned the rhetorical use of conjunctions and how they structure ideas. Stop and take a look at Hebrews 9, 1 and 11, and notice how men and de function on the one hand, but on the other hand. Uh, men on the one hand, de on the other hand, a very sharp contrast. The inferential conjunction, un, is, is very typical in the New Testament, therefore, and you may have heard uh, a preacher say whenever you see the English word therefore in your text, you need to stop and ask what it is therefore. It has an inference, a conclusion or consequence. Gar, again, one of the most typically used words in the New Testament along with chi, and it often clarifies an idea. So are independent units. The subordinate or the linking of dependent units. And here we begin to have an exegetical analysis. Have you seen these categories before? Yes with uh, prepositions, with participles. Uh, we, we've seen these along the way. Infinitives, uh, subjunctives. So we're thinking about these as clues and connecting ideas. Hina, especially with the subjunctive, um, uh, but hati as well, other clauses. So when we find these words, we need to stop and think about their adverbial function and henna for a purpose, hoste with result, causal, hati, or an explanatory sense of, of uh, hati very frequently, comparison uh, for these conjunctions. And here we have another combination just to be uh, thinking about as we would would recognize this, kathos followed by hapos, a comparison as with a result, hapos. So we compare something, and that comparison leads to a resultive idea. So these conjunctions again very flexible, and how they can coordinate. Uh, dependent units. Uh, the declarative or causal, hati, we want to try to nuance those two. The hati that is causal, again, explains the cause of something where a declaration more unpacks something uh, and it, it communicates some kind of an explanatory idea, if you will, or a declaration temporal and spherical or spatial or local where something happens, and we'll see uh, these in Colossians in a few moments. Now I'll think about adverbs. So we've thought about conjunctions, and now we think about adverbs. And I mentioned earlier the flexibility of chi. Chi can also function, as we'll see, in an adverbial sense. <clears throat> and we'll see that in Colossians. So adverbs. We're thinking first about the structure of adverbs. They modify verbs adjectives, other adverbs, and then in a few moments we'll think about the uses of the adverb. I've placed uses over here and we'll come back to that. When we're actually going through and doing exegesis, we're more concerned with what 
the adverb does, not just what it modifies. We will recognize that, and we'll have to in order to get to exegesis, but just seeing what the adverb modifies is not enough. We need to move on and ask further questions, so we'll think about that in just a moment. First, though, uh, we recognize that adverbs can modify indicative, verbs, infinitives, participles, imperatives, subjunctives. All of these parts of speech can be modified by an adverb, any one of these verbal ideas. And adverbs can also modify adjectives uh, or other adverbs. And we see uh, here the adjective and the adverb. A note for us, usually fixed cases, uh, not an inflected case. And we can notice that even here with the uh, uh, lathra, that looks like a dative, but that's actually just the, the simple case of the adverb. Yosef ebulethe lathra apolusai autain. Joseph decided lathra secretly to, to put her away. And this is the, the manner modifying apolusai, to put her away secretly. Come down now and think with me about the uses of the adverb. And I, I note these just briefly here on the side for each of these. Uh, the secretly is, is manner, eti, a temporal idea, answering the question when. Fedamenus, or menos, rather, fedamenos, the one sowing sparingly, hasperon, fedamenos, fedamenos kai therise, will reap sparingly. We have sparingly modifying speron and therise. How? Telling us the manner. Well, you notice that after we find out what word the adverb is modifying, we want to think about what that does in the sentence. It explains that idea in some way and answers a question. So those ideas are unpacked more fully here. In the uses of the adverb, again, CBDAG, the authors note they are very brief, and this table does not provide all of the categories. So I've listed a few more here that are common to identifying the function of adverbs. Causal, purpose, result, emphatic, as well as time, degree, manner, and place. So when we get to an adverb, we ask when, how much, in what way, where, why, for what reason or what intent, with what resultive activity or with what outcome, a realized outcome. And then emphatic often uh, carries this idea again of, of degree or how much. Um, and we'll see that chi is uh, in, in Colossians in a few moments an emphatic adverb in many places. Um, and Paul trying to, to really argue his point. The adverb can also be used as a noun, especially with that neuter article placed in front of it, uh, or as an adjective, uh, very rare, um, but can be. Well, let's look for a moment then at Colossians and some of our work here with conjunctions. Uh, a number of these, two points each, again, for conjunctions and adverbs. I want to walk through a few of them with you. Uh, let's go down to this uh, brief unit here. Uh, again, this is familiar to you. Two parantos, again, thinking about the gospel. Eis kumas, kathos kai in ponti to cosmo estin karpa ruminon kai auxon omenon, kathos kai in humin. Op heis chimeras ekusate kai ep egnute tein karen tu theu en aletheia. Kathos, and here kathos, emothete epapaphras, just as you learned from epaphras. Harris has uh, some good insight here, and I'd suggest you look at it. This, this is a comparison idea, comparing in a broad sense. Uh, 
Epaphras teaching and the Colossians receptivity of the gospel to what's happening in the world as the gospel is going out. Uh, let's jump down to uh, 116 here. I want to note Hati with you and also Hina right here initially. We'll come back and look at 8 in a moment, but first Hati and Hina, numbers 8 and 10. These both follow prototokos, the predicate adjective here, prototokos ectonekron, in uh, just before 116 and 115, prototokos passe skatisaos, and this prototokos, uh, this predicate adjective and nominative is unpacked first by hati, then by hina. By hati here, in a causal sense, prototokos passes ktisaos, uh, firstborn over all creation, and here is why, because in him all was created, or by him, this could be means in this dative. He is first over all creation because he's the creator. But notice how prototokos, firstborn from the dead, here, nominative, uh, a predicate nominative here, an adjective is in the predicate nominative, firstborn from the dead, but here we don't have hati, but hina, and hina with the purpose, in order that he would have first place, that, that he would be first in everything. In pasen autos proteion. You can see here, just in the use of these two conjunctions, Paul is telling the broad story of Christology with Hati and Hina following prototokos. Take a look at Harris's comments there as well. Eta, this is a disjunctive conjunction. Uh, this is uh, the conjunction whether or the thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. These Again, these conjunctions play a large role. Go on down to 121 with me. Here we have chi in an inferential sense. And here's the inference. After unpacking all of this, or not unpacking, but stating all of the Christology of this hymn, Paul then goes on to make the inference. Kai humas pate antas ape latrio menus, kai ekthrus te dianoia, en tois ergois, tois panerois, and you, again here with our paraphrastic you being the, the ones who are far off and enemies separated in your, your evil works in your mind, in your mind. The, the evil works, and you being that. Now here's the inference after all this, and, and now the reconciliation. Nuni de apakat e lox and entosomati te sarcosatu, dia tu thanatu, parastesai humas hagius, kai amomus, kai anagletus, katanopionatu. Just a beautiful inference here, beginning with this kai, and the whole paragraph follows suit. Jump down with me to 2 6. Here we have a combination of conjunctions, hos with un. Un, the inferential conjunction, but hos, a result. Result and inference. So, therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk in him. This combination of conjunctions proves to, to emphasize and apply the idea. We saw an inferential chi in 121, and now an inferential un here in 2.6. We'll come back in a moment and look at the text critical issue uh, in 2.16 with this chi. It is followed by a series of uh, corner turning conjunctions. A, 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 whether this, whether this, whether this, and these help us to uh, structure and, and follow what Paul, or they structure his idea and help us to follow, but this chi is uh, interpreted in one place uh, with A instead to provide a, a greater parallelism here, and we'll think about that in just a couple of moments. Let's jump down to 312. Kathos again here, a comparative. 
as also the Lord forgave you, ha kyrios ekarista kumin hutos kai kumes kathos, and here followed by hutos, as the Lord forgave you, thus also you should do. Uh, we have a, a, a number of hatis in Colossians as well. Let's notice just one here in uh, 3.24. Ha ein poete ex psukes ergazis de hos tokirio kai uk anthropois editus hati knowing that, and this hati, this small conjunction, unpacking editus, knowing that, and this is that explanatory or declaration, here's the, uh, the, the content, if you will, of knowing, knowing what? Knowing that, apakuriu apalempses the tain antapadison Tes that from the Lord you receive the the reward onto Padason Tes Kleronamias, the reward of the inheritance. Look for a couple of moments with me as we round out here and look at adverbs. Um, uh, here in one six, tu parantas eskumas kathos kai. Not a conjunction here, but an adverb. And Harris notes this, page 123, you'll want to see him. This is the first of what will be several emphatic chi's. The use of the adverb in an emphatic sense, this is a category that I list on that table for you previously. This chi emphasizing uh, the, the idea as also in all the world. Uh, where the, the gospel is going out and bearing fruit and growing. And it emphasizes uh, that the gospel is powerful not just to the Colossians, but around the world. And that will be part of Paul's argument, this global gospel, not just for them, but for all. And because of that, they can trust its power and not turn away, not turn to the stoicheia, the, the elementary principles of the world. Again, this is where we look at the small words and think about how they connect, how they modify, and the exegetical significance. 129 here. Eis ha kai kapio agonis amenas katatein energion autu tein energumen en emoi en duname. Here again, an emphatic kai to which also indeed I labor, emphasizing this labor. Let's go down to 313 and notice here with me uh, the combination of hutos and kai. Here, uh, again, we, we looked at this uh, just a few moments ago. Ha kyrios ekarisata, humin, as the Lord has forgiven you. Hutos, thus also you. Uh, here, here the, the idea of hutos implicating the, uh, uh, the Colossians as well in an emphatic chi. The result here, hutos, with the result that you also forgive. Uh, the final uh, note I'll look at with you here in uh, 315 and 16. Verse 16, ha logos tu Christu enoiketo in humin plusios. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. And here is an adverb of manner, richly. This is how that is going to dwell in you. Enjoy the uh, conjunctions here and adverbs. Let's look at a text critical issue and note uh, what is going on here. 316. Me un tiskumas crinetto en brosi kai en passe e in mere heortes e neas 
a sabaton. Let no one judge you in food or food and drink, or in various feasts or new moons or Sabbaths, or, 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 and. And you can do the math on that. We go down to verse 16 here. Sinaiticus and Alexandrinus, as well as a number of other uh, majuscules and uh, uh, a few of the minuscules here that have uh, the, the smaller cursive writing. And the majority of manuscripts have A. And what text critics do is think about the various options and what would have given rise to another. What reading does Chi or A explain the presence of Chi? Well, it's, it's likely that, that Chi, because it is the least parallel, the least synthetic, the least likely to have been changed. In other words, if a scribe had A or Chi before them, as a choice, they would likely write A because of the parallels. Uh, and that's why the, the eclectic or the reasoned eclecticism philosophy of textual criticism analyzes the various options and says which is a scribe least likely to write. Kai here because it doesn't follow suit. Well, we would think that's probably original then. If scribes were trying to synthesize, trying to clarify, then we would think the least likely. And here, it, it still makes sense. In food and in drink, or sort of ex expanding the scope. And we have um, very good textual support here, P46 and B. Uh, as we'll see here in, uh, in just a moment. Here's P46. Uh, let me jump up just a bit here um, and come back. Here's our line. Crinetto in and then Brose is uh, gone because of deterioration, but you can see the sigma epsilon iota from, from Brose, chi in pos a, a in. Do you see it there? So we have chi in, in P46, and if we go to Vaticanus, we have the same. Tis humas crinetto, e, and then that small mark above the e at the end of the line, n, brose, chi, n, passe, a, n, mere, he, or tesane. Uh, so we have, uh, or her, her tes, and then a, and then we go to Sinaiticus, and here we can see that A instead of Chi. Me un tis humas crin eto in brose. And we need to recognize that um, sometimes the epsilon iota combination is reduced to just uh, one of those letters. But brose, A, or in passe or in, and again, that's typical with the line above the, the epsilon for the new there to replace it, mere, or taste a, and we uh, uh, have the eta instead of the chi here, uh, right uh, here, the a instead of the chi. So uh, you can see again how the scribe uh, likely would have written what we have in Vaticanus and 
in P46 with chi, but perhaps smoothed to A here. Let's look at a couple of vocab words. Uh, again, rounding out chapter 12. You've had three weeks now to work on vocab, or the last two, in modules 8 and 9. Prosdakao. I wait for, expect. Prosdakao. Sea two. It should be common to us by now. Skatia. Darkness. This is a favorite of the Apostle John, uses that regularly. Suke, fig tree. Sulambano, sun istemi. Sfragis, in the last chapter we had sfragizo, I seal or mark, that from this noun. Tomao, I dare. Cortazo, I feed, feed to the full. Kosautos, likewise or similarly. All the best to you as you look through these small words. Enjoy this week.